Have you ever wondered what's inside a hob? Well, my name's Derek Robbins from Tomcat Gas Training, and if you stick around, that's exactly what you're going to find out. What is inside a hob? So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take a hob apart. So let's get on with it. Now remember, before you can do any work on a gas appliance, you must be gas safe registered. But if you do work on this appliance on the electrical side, always remember to remove the plug and check it's safely isolated before you continue to work on the appliance. Now, first thing we need to do is get rid of the parts we don't want. So let's get rid of this and this. Let's get rid of these. So that's everything out of the way. And what we're going to do now is set the knobs off. That's the knobs off. You can also see there are seals here to stop any fat and grease going down. So we can remove those. So it's in two parts. They're sticky. You can take the knob off, the igniter. Also, there's a, a nut on here, a retaining nut, so all the ignition on, so we can take that off. There are two screws holding the top down to each burner, so I need to use my little tool, wearer tool now, to take the screws out. So that's all the screws out, the locking nut and the seals, so this top now should come off. Now you've got to be careful with these tops because they're incredibly sharp and also some of them are glued down so you might struggle to get some of them off. So that's what it looks like inside a hob. So you can see this is where the main gas comes in and you can see the four gas taps here and then you can see the pipe work then go into each individual burner. This is the ignition and you can see the ignitions go into each one. There is no flame supervision devices on here, there are no thermoelectrics, that's where they would go if this was fitted with thermoelectrics but it isn't. So let's have a look at these parts and let's start taking it apart. Let's have a look at how the ignition and how this hob burns gas. So gas tap, gas knob, whatever you want to call it. We turn it to ignition, we press the igniter. Okay, we can now turn it to minimum and the flame goes to minimum. We can turn it back up to maximum. That's how they work. Let's have a closer look at how they work then. Have you ever wondered why this is raised up where the burner is, so this is lower down here? Well, what it's for is if your pan boils over, it's going to end up going in here rather than it going down through here. Because here is where the air for combustion comes in. So air for combustion, so 50% pre-air comes into here mixes with the gas and then comes out through here to allow it to burn completely. So if we had this flat uh, over boil the pan then you would end up getting water down there. And that's another one of the reasons what stops your igniter working is if you get moisture in the igniter it will stop the igniter working or worse, it will keep your igniter going. So if your igniter is constantly going, then that will mean there's water onto, onto it. So turn the power supply off, let it dry out, and then it should stop continually clicking. That's why the burner is actually built up a little bit. 
This is what creates the spark. So this is the igniter. So this is where the main power supply comes in. So we've got 230 volts, well, 220 to 250 volts AC, 50 hertz here in the UK, coming from our three pin plug. It then sends the three cables down to the control box. Now, this control box then sends off to each individual burner. So when you press the button down, it sends the voltage then through to the igniter. Now what it does is, the igniter has high voltage, there's about 15,000 volts comes through here, but very low amps. You're unlikely to get an elect uh, electric, sh well, you're gonna get a belt from it, but you're unlikely to die from the electric shock, unless you've got some kind of heart condition or a pacemaker. So we've got high voltage, but low amp. It's, it's always the amps what kill you, not the volts. Pretty much the same as like an electric fence in farmer's field. If we don't get a spark on all four of these, then there's every chance this unit is broken. But if we all, if we don't get a spark at one of them, then there's every chance just one of these is broken and we just need to replace the actual igniter itself, not the control box. Let's have a look at that. You can see here, this is in reasonably good condition, besides it being dirty, that this is actually in good condition, it's not broken. The ceramic around here is not broken, so that will actually uh, ignite properly. But if we look at this one, you can see this has got a big break in it, in the ceramic, so this would not ignite the gas. So always visually check and make sure they're not broken. So when the igniter's igniting, this is what we're looking for. So we will get, so when we turn it on, a decent flame. Now this is a hob with thermocouples. So this is the, you can see it's pretty much the same layout as the other one without the thermoelectric devices or the thermocouples. So this is your thermocouple, this down here is your thermoelectric. So we can follow the wire down, basically that gas valve is feeding this burner. Different gas valves, as you can see, because we need to put this thermoelectric device in here. So, if you haven't seen my video on gas controls, this is basically an electron magnet here. As the gas burns on the tip of the thermocouple here, it creates electricity in millivolts, which then gets sent down to the magnet and makes the magnet. So you have to press the gas tap down to override the safety device to make it light first and then once that's heated it then holds the magnet open to allow the gas then to stay into the burner. Other than that it's exactly the same as the one we've just been looking at. This is a hob with thermoelectrics. Let's have a look what controls this flame. Now the thing that controls the gas is starting off with the gas valve. So the gas valve is what then sends the gas through into the bottom of the burner, okay? So the burner comes in three parts. So this is the bottom part of the burner. This is the burner itself. This is the cap for the burner. What you can see here is what's called retention ports, which allows the gas to come through. But the gas actually comes through this here, which is called the injector. And a lot of the time the injectors get blocked up with fat and grease and dirt. When you're cleaning these injectors, you should not use anything to poke the hole out, which is harder than the brass. So you shouldn't be using anything what's steel. The best way of doing it is the way I'm gonna show you how to clean them now. So the first thing is we need to remove this. So we're gonna remove it by Getting a seven milli socket. And it just screws out. So we can see this injector is pretty much blocked up. So this is how we clear it out. First thing we need to do is boil some water. And we need to put the injector into the bottom of the cup. 
So with the boiling water, we just need to pour it over the injector, just enough to cover it, swizz it around, just leave it for a few seconds. You can now see there's some black bits floating around in the bottom of the water. Now while it's still warm, take the injector out, put a pair of long nose pliers because it's still warm and then we need to get some of this stuff which is compressed air in a can. We need to place the compressed air into there and give it a few blows and let's see if that's cleared it out. We can now see that's perfectly clear and we haven't made the hole any bigger because if we did make the hole bigger then we'd be getting more gas going through so it'd give us the wrong gas rate and we haven't damaged the injector at all but we've cleaned it out so that's the easiest way of cleaning it out. Now let's have a look what's going on inside one of these gas taps. Now first of all I need to undo these two screws. Now we can see there's a spring in the body and we just need to get this barrel out. This is the barrel of the valve which I've just got to lift up and flick out. So what you can see here is a tapered plug. So let's have a look at this a bit more closely. So this is the tapered plug inside the gas valve. You can see there's two holes for the two different sizes. So the maximum and minimum. Okay, so that's your minimum hole, that's your maximum hole. See the gas would come through. So you can see the, the hole there where it allows the gas to come through. There's an adjustment screw in the end there to adjust how much gas you've got going through. As it's sat in, you're spinning it around to allow this to come in line with the gas coming through the to the burner. Now the black stuff you can see is graphite grease, high temperature graphite grease, and this can dry out in most cookers. So if you get what's called a stiff gas tap, it's because this black graphite grease has disappeared or been heated away if it was in a cooker knob. So that's one serviceable part for the hob. So that's a look at what's inside this type of gas tap. There are other different types as well but this is what we've got in this hub. Now that is the end of this video on what's inside a hob. If you've liked this video why don't you give us a thumbs up or leave a constructive comment down below. If you've not subscribed to our channel yet then get subscribing and don't forget to hit that notification bell because we're releasing videos every Monday, Wednesday and Friday while we're in lockdown for the coronavirus. Now then, if you want to see how to install one of these hops, then we've already got a video for that. So check out the links and get over to the channel and watch that one. Now all I've got left to say is, thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. Stay safe and stay in while we've got this coronavirus. Cheers guys.